Lindsay and welcome back to Blushing Pink Stitches. Today is Saturday the 20th of April and this is Floss Tube number 47. It has been a while since I've filmed a video, well that's not true, it's been a while since I filmed a regular update. Um, I did do a couple of videos in between my last regular update, which was at the end of February. I, I cannot believe that it's been that long. Um, so I did do um, a, well, there was the All The Kits April announcement. Then there was, um, I did a kit parade. So if you haven't seen that, um, look back on my channel for that. And then I also did a How To Start A Dimensions kit video. But like I said, it has been, well, just under two months since I filmed a regular update and I did not mean to go this long um but just things have come up in between um which have meant that I just haven't um either had the time or yeah I've just things have cropped up in between basically so um yeah I've been ill a couple of times and of course it's not the best idea in the world to film a video when you're not feeling very well. Um, I went on the Essex Needles retreat at the end of March. Um, so, you know, filming was out for that weekend. Um, and then sort of like the Monday afterwards, I just wanted to chill and recover, basically. Um, and then we had the Easter holidays. So we had two weeks off of school and work. And um, I've said before that I find it very difficult to film or do anything sort of channel or work related during the holidays, just because, you know, I want to be spending time with my husband and with my daughter. And yeah, we, we do a lot during the holidays. And yeah, I just kind of, yeah, I find it difficult. So anyway, I was going to film. Um, so we had our first week back um, at school and work this week and I was going to film on Monday. However, um, it was only when I took Bella to preschool that I realised that, that preschool wasn't on on that Monday. Yeah, I was that parent. So, um, yeah, I had to take her back home again and it meant that filming time was out, basically. So, um it's Saturday morning now. My husband has taken Bella to her dance class and then they're going to go shopping afterwards. So this was the perfect opportunity for me to sit down and film what is going to be a bumper episode. Because it's been so long since I filmed a regular update, I've got so much to show you. I've got um, a load of whips. I've got some finishes. I've got some new starts. I've got a ton of haul. <laughs> Just because I went to the retreat and then I went down some rabbit holes um, over the past few weeks. Um, and I have a huge announcement, which obviously you saw in the um, title of the video. So I'm just going to dive right in <laughs> um, and start with my huge announcement. And that is that I have officially launched, as of the launch of this video, I have launched my website. So for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know I have my own Etsy shop where I sell um, full coverage, uh, fully licensed patterns from um, artists that I work with. I also sell patterns that I have um, designed and I sell um, floss and accessories on there. And one of my goals um, last year was to get my own website. And I managed to uh, get the website and buy the website um, in September. And then I've been slowly working on the design and getting everything uploaded so that what you see on the website now is a finished product in a way. There are things that I would like to do to the website moving forward, but it is how I want it to be at this particular stage. Um, so you can visit the website at blushingpinkstitches.com and I'll have put some sort of screenshots and scroll throughs um, up here so that you can have a little look. Um, the mobile version of the website obviously looks slightly different from the desktop version, um, but they are very, very similar. Um, and 
yeah so i've uploaded all of my full coverage patterns you can buy those in both pdf and printed versions um, my patterns are up there in both pdf and printed versions and you can also buy my floss my royal broidery floss up there um that's listed as so one listing is the um variation colors and then there are i think four or five listings for the normal um color numbers um so it's very clear in the title which color numbers are there um, and the thing is about having the floss on the website is that the website keeps a track for me of what I have got in stock. So up until now, if somebody placed an Etsy order, I had a spreadsheet where I had all of my um, stock numbers. And every time someone placed an order, I would update the spreadsheet to make sure I knew what did I have in stock? What did I need to order more of soon? Um and that was at times a bit labour intensive, but it was what I had to do at the time. Now that I've got the thread on the website, the website does the stock inventory for me. So um, it will let me know when things are out of stock and, and, and stuff like that, basically. Um, and also I can go in and have a look at numbers whenever I want to. Um, so if I want to do an order, I can quickly look at, OK, so what is low? What do I need to look at? So moving forward, my Etsy shop is going to stay open, uh, but it will only sell, um, I think, PDF and printed copies of my patterns. I'm going to keep it open for now because that's where people knew me from originally. And I know that people have um, visited my shop before who don't necessarily know about my floss tube channel or my Instagram and therefore might not get the message straight away that this is there's this change happening I don't know whether I will keep my Etsy shop open forever I may do um, we'll sort of see how it goes um, but yeah like I said everything is up and live on my website now and I'm really really excited about that so I do ship within the UK and I ship internationally as well. And you can have a look at my um, all the information about shipping on the website. Um, there's a bit where you can sort of create your own account and things like that. There are probably or no doubt going to be some teething issues with it. Um, I yeah, I, we've done sort of like test purchases and I've had a few people look at it, but until people start using it properly, I won't know what those little things are that I need to tweak or change. Um, so if you have any feedback about the website, things that you've noticed that aren't quite right or whatever it might be, then get in contact with me. You can send me an email at blushingpinkstitches at gmail.com or you can send me a message on Instagram, either of those work. Um, yeah, and I have also got in the description box down below a Google form that I would be so grateful if you filled in. So the Google form is, is a questionnaire basically um, asking for your feedback about the website, um, but also about um, the the charting of full coverage patterns and things that you would like to see moving forward. Um, so I would really appreciate it um, if people filled that out. And I think I put the function on there for people to put their email addresses, because what I would really like to do is after a month, perhaps put everybody's um, names in a hat and then do a giveaway for those people that have um, filled in the Google form. So that's another incentive for you to fill it out. Um, and I would just be so grateful for any feedback because at the end of the day, I have my own ideas about how um, I like things and what I think, how I think things should be done. But at the end of the day, my customers have the biggest impact on what I do because they're the ones that are going to be buying the products, basically. So I am so super excited to launch that today. Um, and for you all to have a little look at it. Um, and as part of the launch, I am doing a 20% off sale on all of my PDF and printed patterns. So you can go onto the website. The sale is already live, so you don't need a coupon code or anything like that. 
but for the next week um so i need to work out the date of that so depending on when this goes live so I will put a date on the screen here and I'll also put it on Instagram as well um, as to when that sale will be live until. And so you can go and get 20% off any of the PDF and printed patterns in my on my website, um, which is really exciting. Um, and the other incentive that I've got um, going, the other offer I've got going is that um, anybody who purchases a PDF or printed pattern from me in that week period will be entered into a prize draw to win um, 30 skeins of Royal Broidery Thread. So um, again, I will be doing that draw and probably posting it on Instagram and then um, emailing whoever it is that has won those 30 skeins of raw embroidery floss. So um, if you haven't tried it before, now might be your opportunity to see whether you can win some. And if you have tried it before and you like it, then, um, you know, here's an opportunity to get up another project, basically. So, yeah, really, <coughs> really, really excited um, about that announcement. And I hope you guys really love the website. Um, yeah, I just can't wait for you to start using it, basically. It has been a long road of setting it up, um, and mainly because I'm obviously having to juggle um, my own job and, you know, my home life as well as setting up the website. So it took longer than it probably would have, do would have done if I'd have just focused on that. But in reality, I can't just focus on that. So, yes, so there's that. So I think now we should just jump into what stitching I've been doing. Um, and I have been thinking over the last week or so, what should I do in terms of this video? Because it's been so long. Um, should I just show a few of my whips and a little bit of my haul? Um, and then I thought to myself this morning, no, I'm, I'm going to show everything. Um, I know there are some people that love long videos and so this will be a great video for you. If you don't like long videos, then maybe split it up into 20 minute chunks. I know I do that all the time. I love long videos, but I can't always watch a long video all at once. So, you know, pause it, go back to it later. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to show everything. Um, so a finish or a couple of finishes to begin with. I didn't show this to you in my last regular update, although it was fully finished in my last regular update. And I nearly lost this. I took this to the retreat uh, to put on the brag table. Um, and when I left, I didn't take it with me. And one of my friends, Sandy, um, texted me while I was driving home and said, you've, you've left this. And actually, um, I realised when I was about 10 minutes away from home and I pulled over to text Sandy and say, are you still there? Can you pick it up for me? And she sent me this message to say, I've picked it up for you. So luckily, Sandy only lives a little way away from me. So I was able to go and pick it up from her house. Anyway, all that being said, I fully finished. Um, oh, gosh, what is this called? <laughs> it's a Dimensions Gold Petite Kit. What is it called? Oh, let me, I've put it on my Instagram. Let me see if I can scroll back on my Instagram. Okay. <laughs> that was so bad. This is travel memories. <laughs> it's a, a Dimensions Gold Petite kit. Um, and I finished this, gosh, I want to say at the beginning of 2022. Like it's been a while since I finished this. It was one of the one of the first finishes that I showed on my channel, I think. Anyway, um, I finally got it out. I washed it. I ironed it. Um, I stretched it over some foam boards and then I mounted it in this frame. Um, this was a frame that I had originally put um, quick stitch blue butterfly in, uh, but I wasn't happy with the way that I'd stretched that. So I got um, Robert from Hawkins Hoggies. Hawkins Hoggies? Hawkins Hobbies. <laughs> to um reframe that for me uh, but this one I did myself and I'm really pleased with the result it's not completely straight but I think that kind of suits what it is you know because it's got this whole postcards scrapbook 
um, effect to it. It doesn't doesn't really matter. And I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. It's just got such a lovely 3D effect to it. Um, you know, I've said this before, you put so much time into finishing a dimensions kit like this. Um, and at times it can feel like a little bit of a slog, you know, the all the different backstitch, all the different um, thread numbers to put into stitches, you know, the French knots, um, all the different colour changes, but the end result is just stunning. So, um, yeah, I'm getting a bit of glare there. But yeah, I'm super pleased with it. And it sits on my counter behind me here. But for now, I'm going to put it up here. Let's just undo this. Okay, and I have another finish, which I'm going to have to dig out my whole box because I've put it in here somewhere. Okay, here we go. God, that's terrible. Okay, um, can I put that back in there? Yeah, that doesn't need to be there. Okay, so um, I worked on this um, kit for all the kits April and it is um, Florence the Owl by The World in Stitches. So she is a UK based cross stitch designer. She's got her own website. She actually lives not too far away from me in the grand scheme of things. So I decided that this was definitely a kit I wanted to get out for all the kits April because I was so close to finishing it and I did. So there she is. So I just had like the bottom of her wings and the bottom of her um, body and feet and then this little thing over here to do and she is finished. I'm so, so pleased with her. So I'm going to give her a wash and an iron and give her to my friend Becky because Becky has very kindly offered to make this into a bag for my daughter. So yeah, um, just to show you, that's um, stitched on 14 count white Ada. Just to show you, this is the amount of floss I had left. So um, she is really um, generous with her, um, with the amount of floss that she gives you. And in fact, she puts on her website that she'll give you 10% more than is actually required for the project. Um, and that's really good because a lot of her kits are sort of labeled beginner kits. And sometimes you have to do a lot of frogging as, as a beginner and your stitches aren't always as neat as they could be. So having extra floss is definitely a good thing. So this is gonna go back into my master set afterwards. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased with finishing her off. Um, so yeah, they are, my two finishes that I wanted to show you. Should we just get on with the whips? I'm not going to show you these in any kind of order because I have this pile here um, and yeah it just is like a pile of chaos so we're just going to get into it. Um, I worked for a little bit on the Mermaids of the Seasons sale by Bella Filipina I'm working on the summer mermaid. I finished the spring one. And while I was at the retreat, I pulled this out and I just did a little bit of work on her skin. Just wanted to get a little bit of work done on it. Um, so you're not going to see a huge difference, but I have done some. So yeah, I just worked up this way. I don't know whether her arm was already done. I'm not sure. I think it's this lighter colour that I filled in. So there's not a great deal to see, but the skin is one over one. So that is um, more stitching. It takes um, a longer amount of time. But yeah, I just pulled it out to get a little bit of work in. Um, how am I going to do this? I just want to make sure. There we go. So that is stitch on a piece of 28 count even weave from Mega and a Coffee Craft Fabrics. And I am stitching them individually. I have shown spring on my channel before. Um, and I'm using all the cord for DMC crying beads. Okay, number one. Okay, this was a new start at the retreat. 
I started Maidens of the Seasons Part 1 and I started with Spring. So this is being stitched on a piece of 28 count even weave from pole stitches and have I got the and it's in the colour marbled rose. So I started in the top left hand corner and I basically did this um, strip of flowers here. So I really wanted to work my way across so that I could um, start work down from here and start working on her face and also bring um, the border down a bit more here. So I really love those colours on this fabric. I think it's looking fabulous. Um, it's a pretty good colour. It's maybe a little bit lighter in real life. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that. So for this one, I'm using all the cord for, again, all the cord for DMC and all the cord for beads. Does it have Krynic? I must have some Krynic in here. These are the beads. Oh yeah, there's some Krynic. Uh, but this is for both spring and summer. So um, yeah, I made a start on that and I'm really glad that I did. Um, you know, it was one of the projects that I was super excited about starting. So there's that. Okay. Another start that I had at the retreat was um, Kakeshi Dolls by Joan Elliott. This was a pattern in, is it Cross Stitch magazine? I did buy, oh no, it's the World of Cross Stitching. I did buy a copy of the magazine. It's issue 200, I think. Let me just see. Issue 200, and you can see it up here. Um, I saw my friend Julie stitching this, I think at the last retreat that we went to, um, and I really fell in love with it. And of course it's Joan Elliott, so I you know, probably would, but so you can see it here. Um, so I brought a piece of fabric with me, um, and I started it. So I started this using Royal Broidery threads. Um, this is a piece of 32 count even weave from Megan at Coffee Craft Fabrics in like a purple pink colour. And again, I, I started over here, top left, and I just managed to do her hair. So yeah, the coverage is brilliant. I really like the way that it's looking. So yeah, I mean, the sun is out today, but, and there's probably quite a true colour. But yeah, so um, yeah, again, I'm really excited to get that started. Um, I've been looking for which magazine that pattern is out of for a while. Um, and then I finally found it and I've got I've got the physical edition of the magazine. And I also um, I've got the digital version on um, the World of Cross Stitching app. I did look for it on the Readly app because I do have a subscription to that. But um, the Readly app doesn't go back far enough. Because when is this from? Does it say? I can't remember off the top of my head and it doesn't say on the front cover. So yeah, anyway, it's issue 200. Um, all of the projects that I talk about will be in the description box below. So my whips are on a um, Google Sheet that you can click on and have you can look at all the information on there and then any haul that I talk about will be in the description box too. So um I've got to go back. Okay. Another thing that I worked on at the retreat, I flitted between a lot of different projects at the retreat. Um was um tiger lily. This is a crop. This is a pattern um, from Artisy and it's based on the artwork by Jerry Lafaro. Um, and I'm stitching this using raw embroidery threads on a piece of 25 count white even weave, which is my go-to for full coverage. Um, and I did another 195 stitches. So 
uh, hopefully I would have put a picture on from the screen of where I was before. Um, you're probably not going to see an awful lot of difference because 195 stitches won't show a lot of difference. But I did it. Um, so yeah, I worked on it for a bit. And there we are now. So I percentage wise, I won't have moved that much, will I? But let me tell you anyway. <clears throat> there we go. I'm on 4.70% with that one. So there's that. Okay. Um, right, I've worked on quick stitch tranquil tranquil tulip a couple of times since I saw you last yeah so in gosh maybe it's a few times so when I was filming last I was working on it so in February I stitched where have I put it here 2,129 stitches and then in March, I stitched 2,710 stitches and I have stitched on it in April and I've stitched 2,452 stitches. So there's a lot that's gone into this, over 6,000 stitches. Um, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen of where you saw it last in February. And you should be able to see a massive amount of progress. Yeah, there you go. Here it is now. I'm so pleased with how this is going, honestly. Like, it's... I'm putting in two, um, a minimum of 2,000 stitches a month in the hope that this will be done in a year. Um, and it's just so wonderful. So my original plan was to finish this top page and go across here, but this there's a partial page down here because I've, I have reached the bottom. So I figured I'm going to just fill in the bottom of this page, this partial page, and then move across here. Um, this is the start of the butterfly. I don't know whether you can sort of make out the shape. There's all of my threads on the back in between, but look at that tulip. The colours are just so pretty. So yeah, um, I do on my full coverages, I do one over one full cross and I'm stitching this one with um, AMO threads. Um, so with Quick Stitch Tranquil Tulip, I'm on 39.57%. It's pretty good, pretty good. So I think I'll finish that in less than a year because I'm sort of doing what appears to be 10% a month. Um, 2,000 stitches is not 10%, um, but I have gone over 2,000 stitches a few of the months that I've stitched on it. So um, that, that's what I sort of appear to be doing. So there's that. Let's show you this one. So this is Super Size Max Colour, a stitching shelf. Artwork is by Amy Stewart and the... Um, Charting is by Heaven and Earth. I'll put a picture up on the screen of where you saw it last. Um, I don't tell you for this one how many stitches I've stitched because I don't, you know, I don't really know the totals overall. But this is now sitting at 13.56%. So I think since the last time I showed this to you, I finished this page off. And now I'm working on this page over here. So, yeah, there's a bit more, there's, there's going to be some confetti coming up here because this is sort of lots of flowers. Can you see them here? The, this bit down here. So I think this is going to be quite a lot of confetti stitching, but I'm enjoying it still. So this over here. Um, is the start of the hourglass 
that's exciting too. Yeah. So that is that. Oh, let's put this bad boy back in here. That can go on the floor. <laughs> um, okay. Are you still with me? <laughs> um, I saw Ebony, um, someone that I follow on Instagram, stitching this. Um, and I immediately went and bought the pattern and then bought some fabric and thought I'll start it in May. And then I just had a bit of a inkling to start it last week. So I did. This is um, stained glass butterfly. It's a pink lily pattern. Um, she's got a shop on Etsy. So I will leave links to that in my um, whip spreadsheet. I just loved it. It's so colourful and it's so pretty. So I started it again, 25 count white even weave. Um, I stitched 1,010 stitches and I'm at 0.50%. This is like completely. Okay. It's just. Here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. There's a the start. Again, the top left hand corner start. And you can just see this little bit coming in here. The colours are really pretty. So again, this is um Royal Broidery floss that I'm using here. I should write that on here because I forget these things. RB. There we go. So yeah, had a bit of an inkling, had a bit of a need to start that, so I started it. Okay. <clears throat> what have we got now? Okay, before I went to the retreat, oh, sorry, I... Spent one night working on, I don't know, what March, um, Disney characters. And I got 410 stitches in. So this is what this is going to look like when it's finished. And again, I started up here. And I'll put a picture up on the screen of the last time that you saw it. Where is it? Here we go. And this is now at 0.30%. This is the super size pattern. Where, it, where is it? It's hiding. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Wrangle lots of pieces of big fabric today. this chocolate on that as well anyway um yeah this is where we're up to now so you can see a lot more of the detail of um mickey's ear coming in here and then look at the detail of that sort of little motif in the border it's beautiful there's a lot of browns and yellows and greens going on um but yeah when you start to see that detail emerging just makes it all so worthwhile so yeah there's that okay right okay this was another new start i'm stitching this with my friend um sis k on instagram um we we started Tulip Egg. This was a new release from the Cross Stitch Studio. I haven't written down who the artwork is by. Um, so I'll write that on the back of here for next time. 
um but we we've got a hashtag that we're using on instagram called um tulip hashtag tulip egg sal um, if you would like to join us i'm stitching this on a piece of light pink 25 count that i had in my stash um and i stitched 1997 stitches on this and this is at 1.93 percent so i did a middle start on this one just because obviously there's no corner and i could have started up the top up here but i would would have been in a lot of this green background and i didn't want to do that so um yeah started in the middle and this is where we're up to I really like the way that this is coming together um, and there's um, quite a lot of block stitching in here so it's not much confetti at all which is lovely yeah really pleasing colours um, and I can't remember whether this is I think this is DMC Gosh, I'm going to have to write all of that down because I switch between threads quite a lot and um, I need to make sure that I know. Did I write it on Instagram? Let's see if I wrote it on Instagram, what I was using. Terrible. Yeah, I think I used DMC. So again, I'm going to write that on the back here so I know for next time. DMC. Also, I know for when I pick it up again. Gosh, I did that with, with quick stitch tranquil tulip. Started stitching in the wrong thread. Luckily, you're not really able to notice, but yes. <clears throat> right. God, can you see that piling up? I don't know whether you can now. No. Um, okay, then I started my second version of Fruits of Plenty in March. I'm stitching this for my mum. I don't have the cover photo up here, so I'm going to put a picture of it up here. I'm doing a block a month um, until it's finished. And I'm stitching this with DMC 33 and 3608. 33, 3608. It's a pink and a purple. I finished the March block, um, the January block in March. And I'm working on the February block right now. So this is where we're up to. So you can see the whole of January's block is done. And then I've just come across and I've started working on the February block. And I'm going to continue on over the next few days and get that done. I really like it in these colours. I think it looks super pretty. This is a piece of 32 count white linen from Zweigart. It's what I stitched my last one on and mum wanted it the same size as what my one is. So um, I went with that. Yeah, really, really pleased with how he's going. Um, yeah, right, let's stick that in there. Yeah, you can definitely see that pile now. Okay, got a really bad start on this one. Um, I just had a few days where, and I'll explain a little bit later why, where I didn't, wasn't really in the mood. And so I wanted to start the Kingdom of Books kit from Andriana. Um, I've had this in my stash for ages. Um, and so one day I did start it. Um, this is a piece of 28 count even weave that Megan um, custom dyed for, for me from Coffee Craft Fabrics. Um, so I didn't have to stitch all of the background. So um, I'm st I started at the edge and I just did that. It's such a measly start, but I just wasn't, I wasn't in the, in the zone. I don't think I was feeling very well either. So, um, yeah, it's like this really, the shadow of a book next to this one. That's what it is, anyway. So, but I started and it'll be there, started for when I want to pick it up again. Okay. 
Okay. <clears throat> I mean, is that pile going to stay? Maybe. <laughs> right. Last few. I thought I'd show you this one. This is my travel stitching. Um, I'm stitching the January Cottage from Country Cottage Needleworks. Um, it's on the cord for fabric with all the cord, the cord for um, fancy floss, but the, I've switched EMC for royal embroidery. Um, and I'm quite pleased with how I've got on so far. So I just stitch on this on a Saturday when I take my daughter dancing, which is every other week. And I managed to get um, part of the house done. So... Um, Yeah, this is the side of the house. I was just filling in. Um, need to fill in that last window. So, yeah. I thought I'd show you that because I haven't... I don't know if I've showed it on my floss tube before. I think I maybe have at the beginning. A little update on that. Next up, again, for all the kits April, I worked on Chickadees in Spring. It's another Dimensions Gold Collection Petite. I started this in November last year and this is where we're up to. So I managed to fill in around this bird so that I could do the back stitch and I've done some of the back stitch on this bird here and this bird is now um, complete. So again, I'm just filling in around the birds. I've just got this little bit to do here so that I can um, fully backstitch that one. And then I've started working on the bird that's on this branch here. And then alternating between the birds and the background. Um, so I've started filling in some of these flowers because I, I wanted to work my way down to the bottom of here. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with the progress that I made. This is just such a lovely kit and I really enjoy working on it. So yeah, I have all of the colours on my, oh God, they're a bit of a mess at the bottom, on um, floss drops like I do for a Dimensions project. God, yeah, maybe not show you that, but yeah, they're, they're, these are all of the colours um yeah next time i pull that out that um that's not going to be a finish but it will be making its way towards a finish um yeah it's a, a really lovely kit to work on <laughs> um okay the first kit that i started for all the kits april was um with my friend mary ann on instagram this is Oh God, I'm dropping things. Um, the Victorian Charm by Dimensions. It's just a regular Dimensions kit. So it's on 18 count Navy Ada. Is it 18 count? Yeah. And I started in the middle. And this is where we got to. Is that the right way up? No, I think it's this way. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Let's put this behind it. There we go. So, um, yeah, one of those middle windows. It's blowing out a little bit because this fabric is dark. Um, I did find it difficult stitching on the darker fabric. And I think what made it more difficult is that it's 18 count. Um, so, you know, it's a smaller count than I'm... I mean, my sweet spot is 28 pound, which, you know, is 14. Um, so what I did for next time I pick this up, am I going to be able to find it? Yeah. I bought an Art Dot um, Light Mat. Is that the right way of saying it? What would you call one of these? Um, I'll link it down below. But um, a lot of people use these for diamond painting. Let me just go back to my orders. I've forgotten what these are called now. You're probably all screaming it at me. Art dot. 
uh, light pad. There we go. So this is an A4 light pad. I haven't opened it yet because I don't don't need to at the moment. Um, although I probably should because if this is broken, this needs to go back. Okay, that's note to self. Open it now. Um, it wasn't that expensive. Um, and you can buy bigger versions of these. Um, so if I just go on it, I think you could definitely get an A3 version, um, an A2 and an A1. The A1 is like infinitely more expensive. But the A4, normal price is, was £20. At the moment, it's on offer for £10.99. And the A3, again, normal price £31. At the moment, it's on offer for £20. So um, if you're interested, so I thought I would try this out and see whether that makes stitching on that project a little bit easier. Um, so I do have another project on dark fabric um, and some in my stash. So if it works, then that'll be good for them as well. Gosh. <laughs> then I worked on just sometime in March, yeah. Um, Star Hunters by Soda Stitch, and I'm really pleased with my progress on this one. And it just makes me want to stitch more Soda Stitch patterns. Honestly, that I just love, love the way this is coming together. This is a piece of twenty five count. Um, pink splash even weave I'm stitching it over two um, and this is with CXC thread so this is this is where we got to so I finished her and I did the majority of her back stitching not where she joins to him because obviously I've not put those stitches in yet um, but yeah look at how lovely she looks and so stitch has this way of doing back stitching where she it's not fully backstitched. So, for example, can you see the side of this moon? You've got some backstitch and then some gaps in between. And I really like that style. So, yeah. And then I came up and I started on his hair. I think his hair is done. So, yeah, work on his face next time I pick this up. But isn't it adorable? He's just so lovely. Yeah. Let's see if we can get that as the uh, thumbnail for this video. <laughs> Um, yeah, really, really lovely. And I have said in the past that I'm not the biggest fan of CXC threads. Um, I think more for full coverage because of the shading. Um, but they're at, at, been absolutely fine on this project. I like, I like using them for this project. Okay, so we have three whips left. <laughs> um, did this one, did I start this in March as well? Yep. I don't have a cover photo. This is the epic storybook princesses pattern from Clouds Factory. Although I'm stitching a little bit of the frame and the frozen um, insert. So this is a piece of 28 count navy even weave. So this is the other dark project that I talked about. And I'm doing the frame to begin with. And what I want to do is stitch the frame slightly bigger than it currently is. So I'll have to make some tweaks to the pattern. I'll talk to you about how I do that later. And then what I'm going to do is stitch the frozen one on a separate piece of fabric so I can take it off and then potentially change it for a different one. Um, so this is where I got up to. Let me just fold it over. I didn't realise how much stitching this is. So the castle from the frame isn't even done. And this was two days worth of work. There's a lot of stitching in that. There's a lot of colour changes. And I'm stitching this with raw embroidery threads. So, yeah. Um, Bella may need to wait a while for that because that is a project for her. Um, we'll see how it goes. Maybe her frozen obsession will be over and I'll need to stitch a different one. But we'll start with the frame and we'll go from there. Okay, two left. Um, I worked on 
Oriental Beauty by Joan Elliott. This was my new year, new start. Um, in March again, I'm stitching this with Royal Broidery Threads on a piece of 28 count linen from Megan at Coffee Craft Fabrics. And this is where we got to. So I have managed to stitch the entirety of the outside sort of halo that surrounds her head. And then I started coming in and filling in some of these details. Next time I pick this up, I want to alternate between the back stitch on the flowers and the leaves and her head. Because I don't want to leave all of the back stitch till last. There is quite a bit of it. So that's what we'll do, alternate between the back stitch on the flowers and the leaves and working on her face, her hair and her face. But you can see the, you can clearly see the outline of her now, it's, it's really cool. I love this. It is such a pleasure to work on. Um, I mean, I love all of my projects, but there are certain projects that you get out and you just want to keep going. And she's one of them. I just love watching her come to life. Put that there. Okay, last cross stitch whip. This is um, Quilting Bee by The Blue Flower. I've had this kitted up for a while. I took this with me to um, the Essex Needles Retreat as a possible new start. Didn't start it there but decided to start it when I got back. And I'm stitching this on a piece of, is this linen? I think it's linen or is it even weave? What's it say? Cashel, oh, it's linen, isn't it? Um, Cashel, 28 count Cashel linen. It's in the vintage gold or the vintage sun colorway. It's a printed fabric. So like on the other side, it's not printed. And then on this side, it is. Um, I think I bought this for something else and then didn't like um, the way that it would potentially look at on it. So ditched it. So um, this is where we're up to. This is stitched in fancy floss, basically. So that's what I'm using. Look at how lovely this is. I love it. Again, this was one that I didn't want to put down. I was alternating between these motifs on the border and um, filling in the bee and the bee's wing. But yeah, this is going to be so lovely. Um, I think the end of the pattern, I've reached the bottom down here. Yeah. And the end of the pattern is somewhere over here. So I've got a thread hanging at the back just to kind of continue on with this border a bit more. But I didn't know where to stop and I didn't want to do loads of counting. So, um, yeah, it's not massive. So I'll be able to use this fabric for something else afterwards. But, yeah, really love that. Okay. <clears throat> and some of you will know if you follow me on Instagram, that I've gone down um, a couple of rabbit holes that I have been down before um, because I just had a bit of an urge to. So I had a bit of an urge to get back into my crochet and my knitting. Um, crochet was something that I did a lot before Bella was born. Um, so I made her a crochet baby blanket um, and yeah, I've made um, amigurumi, um, like for example, this, <laughs> yeah. Um, she's nicked the elephant that was on my desk. Anyway, um, yeah, I learned to crochet maybe about 10 years ago, um, just from using YouTube basically. Um, and then, then I, got back into knitting again. I sort sort of learnt to knit when I was younger. My mum knit a lot when I was younger. She used to knit us um, school cardigans and things like that. But I was never that good at it. And I always, when I, 
did pick it up again. Um, I always preferred crocheting because I felt like I was better at it. I was more confident at it. And then that made it more enjoyable. But yeah, like I said, I just had this urge. Um, so anyway, I messaged um, Nadine. Um, her floss tube channel is Nad's Stitches, I think. I will link it down below. Um, because she does lots of crochet and knitting. And I just asked for some advice on where should I start again? Um, and she gave me some really, really lovely advice. So thank you, Nadine. Um, so living in this bag here that I got from Timu is the Aria blanket. This is an Attic 24 pattern. Um, and it's made up of lots of granny squares. And I love crocheting granny squares. And one of the things I loved crocheting in general was blankets. So um, I decided to go for this. And I have seen many people on Instagram change the colourway of this and do it in, in lots of different colours. But I thought I'd start with the original pack. So I bought the kit, well, say the kit, I bought the wall pack from Wall Warehouse in the UK. Um, it came with the printed pattern, although you can find the pattern on her blog. Um, so I will leave a link to um, the blog post with the pattern on, but I will also leave a link to where I got the wool from. And I started basically. So this is where I've got to. It's kind of hard to show. It's a join. It's a join as you go pattern. So it doesn't look 100% straight because obviously I've got to add the border and sort of block it a little bit. So you go all the way across the end. I'm not going to have to show it in its entirety. It's 12 across and then I think it's 12 down. So I started on the second row. Yeah, three colours of granny square. And at the back of the pattern, it shows you what colours to use. So, yeah. Working on that. I was sort of doing two a day and then I got out of the habit of doing that. But we'll get back to it at some point. Um, I bought these big bags because I thought, oh, you know, all that wool will fit in there. But I can't actually do up the um, zip. Oh, well. Um, another crochet whip. My daughter saw me working on that and said um, that she'd quite like a scarf out of it. So I took her to Franklin's in Colchester, which is like a local... Um, craft shop to me they've got like a whole wall shop upstairs she picked out i'm not going to get them out but lots of different pink colors and then this is what i started crocheting for her so i i am um, it's the same square pattern as the blanket as the aria blanket um and i'm just sort of picking colors as i go this purple one is variegated which is why it changes um and then I'm going to get to a certain length and I'm going to give it a border and some fringe and call it a day. It's not really the, the right weather for um, making her a scarf, but she'll wear it next year. It'll be fine. So, yeah, she loves those colours. Um, and then knitting. So I originally ordered yarn for a shawl. And then when the yarn came, it wasn't what I had anticipated it being. So I've sent that back and I've picked out some other wool for this shawl that I want to knit. Um, so I'm just waiting for my refund to go through, basically, and then I'll order the other one. But I saw Shiloh from XHMD knitting this blanket a while ago and I, I put it in my Ravelry queue. Um, and then when I started going down the knitting and crochet um, rabbit hole, I um, sort of saw this again on, in my Ravelry queue and had a look at other people's projects of it and came across this particular woman who had chosen um, a different colourway for this blanket. Anyway, this is, let me just get it out of here, the hue shift afghan it's a pattern that you can buy on the knit picks website um so you can see it up here it's a mitre square blanket um and 
I'm working with these two colours at the moment. I'm um, knitting it using, I've, I just picked the exact same colours as she did. Again, I've got another one of these bands. This is um, Red Heart Super Saver um, yarn. It's DK, I believe. Um, and this, again, was from the Wool Warehouse website. Um, and I will leave a link to her project down below so you can see the exact colours. But I've got, like, it's lots of pinks and burgundies and whites and creams it's lovely maybe i'll put a, a picture up on the screen of her finished projects so you can see what it's going to look like i bought this bag from where's this from tea cake and make on etsy it's a beautiful bag originally it was for the shawl and then um, i thought this is perfect for putting two skeins of um this yarn in for this blanket so this is how far i have got so i've knit the first three um squares and i'm i've just um picked up for the fourth one so you can see the mitre square creates this ridge in the middle which is really pretty um so the first square is just um, white and then I started alternating the colours and then this one's going to have this I think it's called buff um, and what you do is you knit um, it's five high and five wide and um, so that's section one and then there are four sections which you then mattress stitch together so um, yeah and it was really lovely last weekend we had some really lovely weather in the uk and we spent a lot of the time in the garden with bella and she loved she loves being in the garden um and i took my knitting out there and so while she was playing and in between her um wanting things and that i sat and and knit on my mitre square and it was brilliant yeah so um i'd forgotten how to pick up stitches so i learned that from a video um if you're interested just message me and again like how do i cast on stitches at the end of a row again that was a youtube video tutorial um and i feel like i'm a bit more confident with it now um yeah it's just all about practice isn't it um and i it's all about practice but the thing about having resources like youtube at your fingertips means that that um there are experts out there who can help you all the time and if one expert isn't explaining things the way that you are going to understand there will be somebody else who will or if one video isn't quite what you're looking for another video will it's just such an amazing resource so there we go that is all of my whips all of my finishes so we're an hour in and i've got a haul to show you so i'm not going to spend a long time on haul um but i do have some stuff to show you so this came yesterday this is a wall for a new crochet along called the blossoms and buds crochet along it's from Siddhar um, they do a crochet along a couple of times a year I think um, they did one for the king's coronation last year and then they did a Christmas one and then I saw this come up come up on my Facebook and um, it's designed by Lindsay of oh god what's her the name of her Instagram Lottie and Albert um, and I love her designs i loved watching her um youtube channel she doesn't really post to it now but um yeah i'll put a picture of the blanket up here the crochet along starts on the first of may and again like with stitch alongs i'm not going to keep up with it but um yeah i'll have fun making that that's that's got a lot of techniques in it that'll be cool for me to try it uses hayfield bonus dk which I don't think I have used before, but it's got some really pretty colours in it. So yeah, that's one bit of haul. I think the most exciting piece of haul is this 
is this bag and what lives in it. This is my Chatelaine. Um, I knew it was coming because um, Zarina had emailed me to say that um, it's here. Can you pay the balance? I can either post it to you or I can bring it to the retreat in March. And I thought, well, there's no point in posting it to me. I'm not going to start it before. Um, but, you know, I'll have it in March. And then I messaged my friend Susie, who goes to the retreats. She makes bags and I asked her to make me a purple or pink bag. And she showed me some fabric and look at this awesome fabric. She does such a good job. Look at how lovely and big it is. It's got a handle. It's got like heart vinyl. Can you see those little hearts? It's so cool. So I'm going to show you what's inside. So the one I'm doing is the Japanese Zen Moss Garden Mandala. Look at how pretty that is. Kaylee from the showing, the, the showing, the sewing shop dyed me a piece of fabric. So this is a piece of 28 count even weave. It's a fat half. God, it started raining. Oh, there we go. So I didn't want anything super in your face or anything like that because the pattern is what should... The stitching is what should be the star of the show. But yeah, look at this. Uh, so yeah, she just did me a piece of lightly mottled, um, like light purple, lilac-y colour. And it's going to be perfect. Um, so that's that. And then I've got the kit. So in this bag... This is the kit. So it comes with all of the DMC and then all of the fancy floss. So there are Karen Water Lilies, there are Dinky Dyes, there are Glorianas, there are, look, you can see Petite Treasure Braid, Silk Lame. Oh, and then all of the beads. And I think she does the beads so that it's just what you need, I think. And I did buy, it's not in this bag, um, but I did buy some floss away bags because I thought with the fancy flosses, it would be better for them to be in their own bag on a ring um, so that they don't get damaged. So <laughs> I was just so excited to get that. Um, this is going to be a birthday start. My birthday is coming up in May and it is going to be... A big birthday for me. I am going to be 40. So the lighting's changed in here because it has started raining and it's gone really grey. Um, yeah, I'm going to be 40 this year. So it's a big birthday for me. Um, and so I thought I would start this as my special birthday start. It's just perfect, isn't it? Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. Let's put this back in here. And just the workmanship on this bag is incredible. So, yeah. Thank you, Susie. Okay, let's get out my tub. And again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on things because we'll be here forever. Should we start from the back? Let's start from the back. Work our way forward. Okay. This is the February fabric of the month from Fabrics by Crafty Kate. It's like this tan biscuity colour. Samplers would look great on this. Um, there's that one. Um, this was an eBay purchase. Um, the Woodland Babies pattern from Stony Creek. So you can see them all here on an afghan or there's like a sampler that you can do in here. But I've always really liked these. You can do them as individual stitches as well. So I got that. Somebody on Facebook was selling this 
for such a good price. I think it was something like £15, which when you look at how much this goes for on eBay, that was a steal. So I snatched it up. Um, and there's that you can see all of the different patterns that are in the book. And then obviously you've got the cover one and it's the cover one that I will probably kit up first. Um, and of course, Teresa Wentzler loves blends. So this, can you see all of the blends? <laughs> it's mental. There we go. So I got that. Uh, what's this one? This is um, an Alera purchase. This is Four Seasons by 2x2 two two Stitch Art. She had this pattern or these patterns and I really liked them. So I grabbed those. Actually, there's a couple of things in my drawer that I'm forgetting. So I'm just going to pause and get those. OK, back. Right. I'm going to dig out. Whoa! Um, this another Facebook D stash thing I got was this kit from Magic Needle. Um, it's called Peacock Butterfly. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the fabric, so we'll have to add some fabric to it. But it does have um, all of the thread. Um, and this had been on my wish list for a while, so I got this for a really good price. Um, these are that's from the retreat. Okay, a few patterns that I picked up recently this is japanese garden by a cross stitch obsession who was it? it was the dutch stitcher i think was stitching this and it's tiny but it's just so beautiful so i got that a laura influence purchase was magic night by x free stitch and this has got like a Van Gogh feel to it. But this is just incredible. There's so much detail. Backstitch on that house. All of the different colours. I loved it when she showed it, so I had to buy it. Um, Again, I think it's the Dutch stitcher that's stitching like miniature pieces of art. And I really like that idea. And I've had the idea before to um make like a felt book of art basically but stitched um something for us to flick through but also for Bella to flick through for a bit of culture basically so I want to start um doing those so I bought the soul of the rose um pattern from Nikki Nikki pattern on Etsy she does lots of miniature pieces of art there are other Etsy designers that do as well but I thought I'd go with her um, and again, like I thought the idea what the idea would be to make like, yeah, like a big felt book. And maybe you'd end up with two or three of these and each page would be a piece of art. And maybe I'd like stitch the name of the painting and the artist at the top and the bottom. Again, something for her to look at. She can Google it when she's a bit older. I think that's a really nice idea. Um, yeah. Any advice on how to do that would be great. And um, the Cross Stitch Studio are having a spring sale. So all of their patterns are 50% off, which they normally do a Black Friday sale, but they usually just do, I think it's 20% off. So 50% off sale. I think it's until the end of April. So yeah, if you want some of their patterns, go for it. So this has been on my wish list for a while. And of course, a lot of people are stitching this. Honeymoon Sunset. Yeah, Jen, Jen stitching this from the Caffeinated Crafter. Alera started this. Um, who else? There's a couple of others which I can't remember off the top of my head. I got that. And then I also got from the Cross Stitch Studio one that I've bought fabric for. This is one of their newer releases. It's called Flowers and Flyers. And you can get two, three different sizes of this. This is the biggest size, of course. Of course it is. Um, you can get like a crop that's just like the middle and then something that's a little bit bigger. But I really liked all of the detail. And um, yeah, I won't be able to stitch it in my lifetime. I know this. But yeah, so there's 
a massive piece of fabric in there for that. Um, the other, and then at the same time as buying that fabric, I also um, kitted up this, which I think was also in my haul. This is Love Potion Laboratory by Luthi and Art. And they're on Etsy. Alera showed this pattern and I just loved all of the purples. So, yeah, I bought a really big piece of fabric for that as well. Oh, OK. Um, again, Facebook D stash mason jar lineup from Dimensions. I loved I've loved this kit for ages. So I decided when somebody was selling it that I'd get it. Um, who was it? Gosh. Oh, she's a new floss tuber. She, um, let me just have a little look at my watch later list because she's just put out second video. Where is she? Can't find her now. Oh, okay. Ellie. Her channel is, oh, is it just Ellie? Stitching B, she is on Instagram. She shows a slightly different um, pattern from this that her and Charlie Feathers were stitching. And I couldn't find that one, but I did find Ming Orchids. This is a design by Carolyn Meacham and it's um, charted by Serendipity. Look at that. It's just stunning. And somebody was selling a kit on eBay for like nine pounds. So, I mean, I would have paid that just for the pattern. But the whole kit, I had to snatch it up. Um, this was another Facebook de-stash and it was a disappointment, but I got my money back in the end. Um, somebody was selling Enchanted Cottage by Dimensions. This is a really hard um, gold collection petite to get hold of. But when it arrived, there's no fabric. This is how the threads arrived. It's just basically the pattern. So I had to message the woman and say, um, hold on. So I did get my money back in the end. Um, okay, I got my, the next one in the Fabulous Houses series from Cottage Garden Samplings. So this is the cottage. That came um, recently. My friend Becky um, showed me this. We went on a spa day a couple of weeks ago and she showed me that she was stitching this. And so I had to buy it. Um, it's rabbit parade by the blue flower look at how cute that is all the little animals and the flowers so i bought that and i bought a couple of the hand dyed threads that go with it it's not all of them but um yeah um i wanted to try the smaller nerge hoops they're not hoops frames um, I bought the big one a while ago and I wasn't that impressed by the tension on it, but I've heard the smaller ones are better. So I bought from Hobby Jobby the remaining three sizes. I've got different colours. Um, so this, this one is 110 by 95. Then we've got number two is 165 by 145. This is in millimetres. Um, and number three is 220 by 195. So I thought I'd give those a go. I thought they'd be good for like small dimensions kits. Julie won, won this in the raffle at the Essex Needles Retreat and then gave it to me, which was very generous of her. It's Cookies for Santa by Erin Elizabeth Signs. So that'd be a lovely Christmas stitch. Some dark fabric there, which I quite like the look of as well. Yeah. Um, this was the March fabric of the month from Fabrics by Crafty Kate. It's like this lovely peachy colour. So yeah. Um, again, a Facebook D stash. Um, 
I've been looking for the pattern for this for ages and somebody was selling the pattern and a piece of fabric to go with it. So this is Mermaid Heaven. It's um, by Pin Designs, I think it's called. Look at how beautiful that is. Um, and they included a piece of fabric in the package, which is this sort of like, I don't really know how to describe it. Mottled blue and cream and grey fabric. It, I don't know who, there's no label on here as to who it's by. So, but I thought actually that would be quite nice to stitch that on. And so I kitted it up with Royal Broidery, sorry, Royal Broidery threads. Need to put that in a proper project bag now. Um, yeah. Okay, put that back in there. Yeah, because the bag is broken on that. Um, okay, you still with me? <laughs> Um, a couple of patterns I bought while I was away at the retreat. Uh, one was an autumn lace stitchery pattern called Sakura. I've not bought one of their patterns before. And I love anything Oriental and she's beautiful. Look at that fabric as well. I mean, I have to do her on that piece of fabric. I believe it's picture this plus fabric. So I'll probably have to order that from 123 Stitch. But she's just incredible. And I believe Kenny from Kenny Stitches did the model stitch on that. And then Laura, again, has been working on this for ever since her channel's been up. And I had to get it. So this is Blackwork Flowers and Birds by Leslie Thiers. And every time she shows it, I'm just blown away by how pretty it is. Um, so, yeah, I bought that. Um this is the pattern that I'm going to be stitching for my stepdad. He loves motorbikes. So I can't remember the shop I got this from. Oh, is it set up there? Favourite gnome. There you go. So it's a gnome biker. So I'm going to stitch up for him for Christmas. Oh, I didn't show... Oh, I talk about that. I didn't show my other finish. I completely forgot about that. So I'll just pause and talk about that now. For mum's birthday, I stitched her um, latte. It's a buttons and beads kit. Um, and yeah, I gave it to her for her birthday. So it was my secret stitch. I'm going to put um, a picture up on the screen here of what it looked like when it was finished. I didn't use the perforated paper because I don't really like working with that. So I stitched it on a piece of 28 count, like cream, ivory, um, even weave. Um, yeah, and I really liked the way that that turned out and she loved it. So, um, yeah, so that was my other finish. I completely forgot about that. Um, those are those floss away bags. That'll have to go in there. Okay. That's all fabric, so we'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is another recent eBay purchase, um, another sort of unicorn kit, which was Bird Post. Um, I've been looking for this for ages and this came up on a, like, a saved search alert and I managed to win it. Um, so again, it's got everything in it that you need. My big purchase, uh, is it, I don't think it's that piece. It must be this one. Yeah. My big purchase at the retreat was the kit for... Snow Queen by Mirabilia. So I'd been eyeing this every time I went to the Essex Needles retreat or a stitchy day. Um, I'd been eyeing this and I sold my pip and chip floss chips um, that weekend because I bought them thinking that they were going to be a good floss solution for me and they turned out not to be. So I sold those and so I thought, right, well, that pays for this kit basically i didn't buy it with the fabric and i didn't buy it with the chart so it made the kit a little bit cheaper but it is one of the most expensive mirabilia kits um but i've wanted it for so long so i got it and what was cool was that kate from sparklies was at the retreat 
and she had a I'll show you some other fabric I got from her she had a remnants box and um, it was sort of things that she dyed that hadn't quite worked out or that weren't part of her regular line or that was odd sizes and so I got this piece of 28 count even weave in this beautiful colour it's sort of it's it's quite it's showing up quite dark on the screen those dark patches are not that dark but I thought would be perfect she needs to go on a fat half and this is not quite a fat half so my margins are going to be slightly less than I would like than I would usually like um I think they're going to be two inches rather than three but I, I think that's fine and it was such a good price so it's worth having a look in the remnants pot um so she is now fully kitted to start any time I'll fold that up properly later and then I will show you the other fabric that I got another piece in her remnants box was this one it's this is slightly smaller but um slightly different color but it was lovely so um that would be perfect for something I got Gina's Delight 28 count even weave it's a nice blue bluey greeny colour showing more blue on the screen um tropical reef 28 count linen really like the colour of that that'll be perfect for like a mermaid or something um winter skies 28 count even weave it's showing more purple here but it is a bit purple but it's a bit more blue in real life um and the other one I've purchased from her at the retreat was Lavender Blue, 28 count even weave. So, yeah. Then the fabric of the month um, from her was this one. So this was the Janu January and February fabric of the month. I love that colour. It's just amazing. She showed a picture of it all in her dye pot. And it just looked incredible then. And so I was so happy to receive it. Um, and then the last two bits of fabric I got, I got from the D-Stash table. Um, so one is a Pole Stitches 28 count opalescent in the colour Neptune. And then the other one was a Picture This Plus whim 32 count whimsy linen. It's um, a fat 16th. So it's just a little piece. I've got that as well um i think that's everything <laughs> um yeah wow that was a long video um a bit shorter than what i thought it was going to be but anyway it's a long video what else can i tell you life update um I've sort of mentioned a few things at the start, but we did some lovely things over the Easter holidays. We took Bella on an Easter egg hunt um, at a local primary school, which had like some woods out the back. And that was so well organised. And she had, they had questions to answer as they were going around. She wasn't interested in the questions, but there were sort of little activities for them to do. Um, and at the end, there was sort of like a playground that she could play and she got an egg as a reward. So um, that was lovely. We went to Clacton, um, sort of like a local um, coastal area um, for the day on the last Friday of the Easter holidays because the weather was so nice um, and she got to go um, in the arcades and we went on some of the rides for a little bit and then we sat on the beach for a little bit, um, you know, had lunch, got an ice cream. It was a really lovely day um yeah the Essex Needles retreat in March I had an absolutely fantastic time um yeah I just have such a lovely time every time I go I'm back again in September um I'm hoping to get on next March's retreat you know keep your fingers crossed for me um yeah I just love spending time with my friends and you know having some me time for the weekends getting to do a little bit of shopping it's just such a lovely time, basically. Um, I signed myself up for a sewing course. 
so um i found out about a new um sort of like craft shop um in a place called tiptree which isn't too far away from me what is it called i can't remember off the top of my head now uh hold on have i got it i've got the card in here a thread above the rest it's called um, because I was looking for somebody to give me one-to-one -one sewing lessons, um, this place do a 10-week course where basically she will help you out with whatever project that you want to work on during that course. Because a lot of other sewing courses that I've looked at, you have to make specific projects, like they'll bring like three different things throughout the six weeks or whatever it might be. And whilst that's good... I want to, I really want to it to be specific to me and so if I couldn't have one to one then this was the next best thing and I really want to be more confident on my sewing machine I would like to learn how to make project bags um project bags for cross stitch project bags for my knitting um and you know like things like um scissor holders for my lowry stand and just things like that i want to become more confident on my sewing machine and more confident with cutting patterns out and putting them together and i think this course is going to be perfect so it starts this tuesday um and it runs for 10 weeks it's two hours every tuesday evening and like i said you get to take along whatever project that you would like to work on she also does an overlocker course in june um, which i'm really tempted by um, so i did buy an overlocker a couple of months ago and i know how to thread it i know how to use it but my confidence level is low on it so um yeah i would like to get to know that a little bit better and just go, go away from that feeling like you know i'd be okay using it at home on my own so yeah i've signed myself up for that i'm really excited about starting that next tuesday um what else have i got to talk to you about don't really know i've got my um upcoming big birthday we're going away for the weekend um at the beginning of may half term which is after my birthday um bella is going to a festival with her with my mum and stepdad in wales so they offered to look after her for the weekend anyway and then this festival came up and um, so they said can we take her and we said yes so that she's going to a festival in wales and we're going away for the weekend to london um i have no idea what we're doing stefan's been in charge of the whole weekend i know we're going to london but that's all i know so um i will have filmed before i go to that but that is upcoming and i'm really looking forward uh, really looking forward to that um yeah it's it's exciting um so plans for the next little while i'm working on my second fruits of plenty block at the moment um i do want to get some more kit stitching in before the end of april and then may i'm sort of feeling a little bit of my cross stitching well i because i've sort of been interspersing it with knitting and things like that i've sort of felt a little bit like i'm not getting enough done but I think I have to take a step away from that and just think what I do is what I do and what I am enjoying is what I'm enjoying and there's nothing wrong with that. So, um, but I think I might go back to uh, maybe spinning a wheel. Maybe I'll start doing that after I finish my Fruits of Plenty block and um, spinning my whips wheel because there are lots of whips that I have that I haven't touched this year um and things that i'd like to get back to it was quite nice to finish um florence the owl and i know i've got a couple of other things that are not really that far away so it'd be good to to get those going as well but i'm still working on the premise that i'm doing what i want to do when i want to do it and just enjoying it basically so um yeah i i would like to be back in two or three weeks um it tends to be a bit longer than two weeks at the moment but we'll, we'll sort of see how it goes and um, this has definitely been too long in between updates um but you know it is what it is 
So um, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below, any questions that you have, anything that you'd like to talk to me about. And just to remind you about the website, please go on, please have a little look, please fill in that Google form that I've got in the um, description box as well. I'd love to hear your feedback. Um, yeah, I'm so excited for that all to get started. So um, have a good couple of stitchy weeks and I will see you soon. Bye.